Hi there, my name's Elliot. I'm the founder of Contrast, an e-commerce marketing agency. Today, we're gonna to jump into faceted navigation and the best practices from an SEO point of view for e-commerce sites. Okay, so what we'll be looking at today is what is faceted navigation? Why is it an issue and what kind of things does it do and cause from an SEO perspective that we need to consider and ultimately look to resolve. So as well then looking if your site is experiencing these faceted navigation issues and then we'll look at some solutions of how to fix them. First of all dig into and talk about what is faceted navigation. So you've probably experienced this um, when on a e-commerce website you're uh, browsing on a category page you're looking in the left, probably on the sidebar in the left, there's options for like filters or sorting. Um, that's a case of um, we need to sort via size or color. They're, they're, no, they're the normal stereotypical ones that you th you'll find on an e-commerce site. Though having said that, faceted navigation also exists outside of e-commerce when it's things like articles by date, authors, topics. They're just some examples as well as on larger like job sites. That's where they kind of come in into uh, contention. But all, ultimately all this is, is a way of filtering down data to get a more granular targeted outcome. Again, how we spoke about uh, frog rate, so, uh, price and size. So if we look at it, this is an example here. It could be a user might want to find a, a rally product, so they click on the brand rally, and then they are finding a product that is uh, under £25, and that's the second faceted navigation search. So these two searches help narrow down the field of search to bring up the type of products thereafter. So that's what faceted navigation is. From a user's perspective, it helps them uncover the actual product or page that they're after, limiting and cutting down the number of search results. Unfortunately, this can lead to a lot of issues from a performance perspective um, for your e-commerce store that will hamper your SEO potential. Digging further and kind of uncovering this a little bit more, what do facet navigation cause problems for SEO? Every new search, other than the actual category page itself, it will create a new page in the eyes of a search engine. And if you imagine with brands and different um, faceted searches you can do through color, size, and other uh, options that you've got as custom options on your site, you can imagine there could be tens, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these pages created as different variants. So this can become a big problem quite quickly if not set up correctly from day one. So again, if we look at this as an example here, you can start to uncover how many possible variations there are. And ultimately, we're closing on infinite possibilities depending on the amount of SKUs you have on your site. So if we look at this as an example just for red wool socks in size four, again, we could just have, we're on the category page for socks. We then look for size four. That's one option we could do. We could search for just wool that's just a secondary option, or we could search by color. So there's three instantly. Well then obviously those three, we could do those combinations. So we could have size, material, and color, but we could do those the other way around. So that gives us another three different options. And then again, off all of those, we could then combine other faceted ser searches with them from a price, whether that's price on those um, same queries we've just done, faceted searches in the same order, or that's priced high to low, or we could do low to high. So as you can see here, so many new pages are created off the back of faceted navigation, which is ultimately like duplicate content, which is gonna cause issues. So what we need to then look at is that if we just search and check to see if this is a problem in your site, you could just throw the category page in as a um, search into Google, just using site, dot dot forward slash whatever kind of category page you can then see how many pages are indexed just briefly it doesn't show every page but it gives you an, an idea and all of a sudden you might see that with 500 products 30 categories like you've got millions of urls and quite a lot of these are all the same so that's providing no value and it's only going to have 
further, further issues down the line. So obviously we need to put some a solution in place and fix these issues because having all these filter options index, it's, it's not good for your e-commerce site. There is going to be thousands of ways for people to kind of come to your site and find these pages. Yes, we could look at blocking out some of these faceted search, searches from the robots.txt of like color and size. But again, there's still going to be lots of other options. So that's not going to actually fix the um, issue. And we're going to have to look at doing it in a different way. As we've already briefly touched on, with having all of these pages and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, possibly even millions of these pages, depending on the size of your site and how many SKUs you've got, all these pages are very similar. There's not really that much difference in them. So obviously this is classed as duplicate content and very thin. And in this example of like the red socks in size four that we're looking at, like we'll have millions of pages that all look like I'm selling socks. So what value is that providing? What we see then is, is punishment and your site being held back from a visibility perspective that you need to put in a solution to fix this as well. If you're a larger e-commerce site, there are other issues that from a crawl budget perspective that we'll touch on very shortly that it's going to hamper the amount of pages that then your site can then crawl. So we need to make sure that this, we're only indexing the pages that we want and not all these other new duplicate or duplicate pages that are being automatically created. So that's something that we need to bear in mind. So as we just briefly touched on, one of the issues that you'd run into there is crawl budget, that if you, for argument's sake, got all these different variations of the same page being indexed, well, obviously Google or um, other search engines do have to crawl these pages and they will try and index at them. And if you imagine that if it's crawling these, it's going to ultimately, there's only so many pages it can crawl on your site. If you're a larger site, it won't then crawl other pages. And this is when you get crawl budget issues that ultimately you need to say to the engine that these ones aren't important and the other categories and product pages are. So that's kind of there where we'll talk about the solution of how to kind of rectify this. And again, crawl budget isn't going to be an issue if you're a smaller um, uh, site, but if you've got, let's say, a thousand products plus and you've got the ability of, let's say, choosing from five to seven different parameters. Well, the variation possibilities on the amount of pages created off the back of this, we're already in the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. So it's definitely, you might not think it's an issue, but it can come an issue very, very quickly. So again, we then need to just touch on the last um, perspective, which is um, from a link and making sure that's optimized as well. If you, we obviously know from an SEO point of view that links are still valued and weighted very, very strongly within search engines. And again, if you imagine that if we've got all these pages being indexed, lots of people can then link to any of these random um, new faceted search pages that are being created and that have been indexed rather than the main category page, ultimately diluting any of the effects you can have um, on that category page. If we'd only had the category page being indexed and all these links are coming into that, that's only going to help improve that and reward your category page for this efforts that have been done rather than having a million um, faceted search pages with a few links to a few of the different pages that just one page is being for argument's sake indexed and that one is seen as the authoritative. Again, this, this is a smaller issue that you just need to be made aware of. Next, we're gonna dig into see if your site actually is experiencing these issues. Not every site is, and some of them have been set up correctly to not index um, or have the correct canonicals in place around uh, faster navigation. So we're gonna go and go through the steps of how to check to see if your site is experiencing these issues and if you need to put a solution in place. Now we're gonna jump into um, Google Search Console. For yourself, from say we were using the socks as an example, you could take your um, URL, paste that into the uh, search bar at the top, and then you'd be able to get the details on that section as you can kind of see from this screenshot here on the, on the page. We get an, uh, an overview of that category to see kind of what pages are indexed that are, aren't. And this kind of ultimately gives us an idea that we can see in this case that they are actually being indexed correctly and that we've not got an issue. Another quick way to kind of see this, if you know how many products you've got in the category, let's say 
50 products. Do again like the like search in Google, you can do from, so you can see it there, site dot dot HTTPS, your URL. And if it pulls back more than the 50 products, you can probably see if it, we're in the thousands, like you can see again, like it's indexing um, the parameters. If you're a little bit more experienced, you can delve into the um, server logs from your, uh, from your site, from the hosting provider and do some log file analysis. Again, this will tell you um, if pages are being indexed and which ones, and you'll be able to really get a bit more um, in the eyes of what um, from say, Googlebot or other um, search engines are crawling and get a more accurate picture of what's going on. But Google Search Console will, and also doing like just a site search will give you um, a very quick understanding of what's actually going on and if this is an issue for your e-commerce site. Now we're coming on to how we actually fix this and what we need to do to resolve faceted navigation issues. So the first one is a canonical tag. So what we can do is we can put on the duplicate pages a canonical URL to say that ultimately is a bit of code that points back to the parent page. In this case, it would be the socks category page that says, this is the page that I want you to care about. These others are ultimately duplicates, but it's, it's more there for users to just um, have, have an experience, but ultimately ignore it. That's ultimately what a uh, canonical URL is and how it works. Obviously, you'll need to work with your developers to ultimately implement this across your site. If you're running a more modern um, e-commerce platform, they most likely will have this built in in some shape or form. So you might not have this as an issue. You will want to make sure that this is um, done correctly on each of the individual pages from categories to uh, this different product variations and the filtering, the canonical where they're actually your, the parent page will be slightly different. So just make sure that, um, that you do get this uh, canonical correct and how it will um, match out. And again, there, like we say there, there's different variations and sorting and filtering that you'll need to go into to actually resolve this. So what we've got now here is we've got an example that we can delve into so you get a better understanding of this. As we can see here, uh, we've got an, a, a screenshot of an e-commerce page and we've done two faceted searches, one for to find products under £17 and to put them in price ascending. So this then obviously brings us up a faceted search page, uh, creating a new one. And what we've then gone and done is looked in the source code for that page. And what we can see here is that it has actually got a canonical link and it is pointing back to the subcategory um, page that we were on, which was bike pumps, which is perfect. So that is set up correctly. Ultimately, what this is then saying is that um, to search engines that don't worry about this duplicated page, you can ignore it. But from a user's perspective, it's there to help them um, find and have a better user experience. Obviously, taking the canonical approach is what we recommend as the um, best practice. Again, mentioned if you're running a um, modern e-com CMS like um, Shopify, BigCommerce, Magento, and, and other content management systems, they most likely will have this built in in some shape or form. Again, if you have a custom CMS, this probably won't be in your, it's quite an area where we, we find issues with, and we normally have to work with in-house developer teams to implement. And again, if you need to get this implemented, you need to work alongside either an external or in-house developer to get this implemented. Solving this issue is only gonna have massive impact, positive impact for your e-commerce store. Again, reducing the amount of crawl budget and index pages, reducing duplicate content, reducing the um, dilution of link equity. So it's only gonna be a positive thing for your e-commerce store. There are other alternative solutions you can do through no indexing tags and some um, alterations to the robots.txt file. So now delving into the alternative options around robots.txt. This was probably one of the ways that previously people suggested that you, in your robots.txt file, which is host on your um, hosting server, to exclude parameters. With the way that search engines have been moving towards, it's now a directive that isn't always taken into consideration. They might crawl it. Um, but whether they uh, choose to index it still might actually happen. So I wouldn't use this as your primary focus as we've already alluded to. It'd be more a case of you can use, just use this as a secondary option um, to still um, 
disavow or say don't crawl from say parameters like material or, or color that's just one option and again as you can see here from a, an example a screenshot from a robots.txt file we're saying user agent star which is um, which means that all uh, search engines and then again from a disallow these are subdirectories sub that we're saying that just don't crawl them this is a, a polite way ultimately of saying it to a search engine it doesn't mean that this directive will be always followed and they might still uh, it index it so I wouldn't use this as, as we've already said as the, as the primary uh, way again within your um, robots.txt file it will also contain your sitemap and in your sitemap this will contain your categories and shouldn't contain the extra um, parameter searches of all these other pages so as we spoke about the robots.txt you would then pair this up with no index in the pages to, just to make sure that they definitely de didn't get indexed the only issue to taking this approach of like the no indexing is that google still crawls the page to then find out that it shouldn't index it so yes we might not have duplicate content but we've still got issues on the crawl budget side so hence why we were suggesting the canonical uh, solution to begin with so with all of this there's pros and cons to to the, this these latter options and these might have to be workarounds that you have to do for your individual circumstances and that's something that you just have to assess on a case-by-case -case basis something else that we can obviously look to do is blocking uh, the url parameters in google search console the way that you just do this is go to google search console and um, just go to the url uh, parameters section and then in here you can see that they might have already picked up on some of these uh, around like uh, price min and max and some of the sorting filters um, fragments like size color and things like that that they have actually picked these up and done a bit of a catch all for these statements to ultimately say don't index these and you, what you can do in here is if it hasn't added it you can literally click on the button to add a parameter and add these in for yourselves the final couple of points to touch on as we've already mentioned re regarding bespoke CMSs this is normally an issue that we run into with them and if it is a case that you're going down this as an option make sure to work with the developers if you can ahead of time before you launch the site to make sure that this isn't going to be an issue and cause visibility um, uh, issues and obviously crawl budget duplicate content you can minimize that ahead of time obviously if you, this is a thing post live and it's just it's actually a, a, an issue moving forward obviously we've talked about the solutions and which ones that we can go for as uh, which ones are the priority and which ones we would then do subsequently again can use javascript to fix this as an issue but this again would be a last last resort to want to work with your developers to actually put in place we'd go through all the other um potential options first and do a lot of uh, testing to try and make them work this is a very complex topic and can have big massive uh, financial ramifications for an e-commerce store so no doubtedly this isn't uh, if you're looking up this as an issue it's something that you're experiencing and more than uh, not we've got a solution for you so definitely reach out to us and we'll probably be able to help fix it for your store this isn't the first time that we've done it and it won't be the last time so if you've got any questions or you want to just have an informal chat to see if we might be able to help you and fix this for your e-commerce store definitely reach out to us on the information below